the first prototype vagina had to be tested and I, I volunteered myself for that task. This is Unplanned America, where you're invited to join Pav, Gonzo, and me, Nick, as we flee Australia to road trip around the land of the free in search of the weird, wonderful, mysterious, and sometimes scary, unplanned side of America. In this episode, we find ourselves teamed up with some folk whose grip on reality may have gotten a little slippery as their fantasies take over their lives. Later in the show, we speak to creator Matt McMullen and visit his uncanny valley of the real dolls. But first, let my voice be your guide as we prowl the dark streets of Seattle with the Rain City superheroes. You get shot at, you hide and duck the bullets and then you go after the bad guy. And then afterwards you're like, I just got shot at. Stabbings are totally different and that's what changes the game up. Because once you get stabbed, even if you fix the problem, the knife is still most likely in you. So then you've got to figure out, do I go to the hospital, do I get stitches, how do I get the knife out? I'm bleeding all over my Kia of justice. Like, you're just bleeding everywhere. One local man came within seconds of having his car broken into, perhaps stolen, until a superhero came to his rescue. From the right, this guy comes dashing in, just wearing this skin tight, rubber, black and golden suit. We'd heard about how he and the other eight members of his Rain City superhero crime fighting movement walked the streets, eyes out for crime, prepared to fight it. People are saying, no way, dude, no way. They're like, oh, you were probably drunk. After some solid road tripping, complete with dodgy accommodation, we finally reached the next destination of our American adventure. Right, so we've made it to Seattle. On the way, I had horrible pain in my stomach. Turns out my appendix might rupture at any moment. I stopped in at hospital. They told me I should see a surgeon, but I bought this sweet jacket, and nothing is stopping me from going on patrol with the Rain City superheroes tonight. I'm all kitted up, and I'm ready to go. No lame appendix is going to stop me from walking the mean streets and fighting crime. Should hit you in your stomach. Within minutes of reaching our downtown rendezvous point, we'd already become witness to a crime in progress. 1701. And your name? Uh, Pavo. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, dude. So we're waiting for Phoenix Jones, and in the meantime, we saw a dude hit a chick in the face, and we called the cops, and now, now they can't find the chick who the dude punched in the face. So now they've just let him go, and now we're waiting for Phoenix Jones and we're just out here on the streets with the guy who we called the cops on who looks like a total thug, so I sure hope Phoenix shows up quickly. Much to our relief, moments later, our hero finally arrived. But you got me now, got me now? Perfect, let's do this. All right, we've met the boys. They're all here. We've mic'd them up. We're going to go on patrol. I'm not disappointed at all. Cabby or Jack, who's getting head cam? Rock, paper, scissors, you guys got to watch. Loser gets that man. Oh! Who's got it? Me. Haha, get some. Lasers, lasers. It's a, it's a, you know what this is, right? I've got, see that? I've got snipers on me. It's a contour camera slash taser. So you can camera them up and then you can shoot them with the taser. I'm Phoenix Jones. I'm the leader of uh, the Rain City Superhero Movement. It's a 10 to 15 member citizen crime prevention group. Yeah, I'm very happy with my husband, Phoenix Jones, being the member of the team. I helped out from the sidelines, kind of behind the scenes, and then it was only a matter of time before I took on a mask of my own and started helping them out. We're attempting to, in my opinion, promote citizen accountability and show people that they have the right to determine what is acceptable where they live. Let's give you more angle there. Basically, I'll be mobile support. So I'll be in the area before they get there. I know where the hotspot to be and I can dispatch them accordingly. Now this will listen to everything that Seattle Police has going on right now. With the fact that I've got th full 3G internet connectivity with this laptop, I will be able to view them on live stream and run interference as well. So let's talk about some rules of engagement. Cool. All right, so um, since you guys are like the journalists, we prefer if you didn't get involved in any of the crime. Let's say something breaks out. Cabby's job is to immediately close the distance. Come on in, close the distance. Immediately. Close the distance. We're both going to get in front. Now it's two on one. At this point, these guys are going to float. We got a 911 call. You got your phone? You got a phone? No, no not, not a burner phone. Perfect. Here's a boner, burner phone. I spent a lot of my life 
being not a good person. You know, I was selling drugs, I was beating people up for money, I was doing all kinds of stuff that, you know, is just kind of appalling to me now. And so when I got myself clean, I got everything, you know, straight. I was like, you know, I gotta find a way where I can go out and I can make up for all these things. Energized by Midnight Jack's words of inspiration, we joined the Rain City superheroes as they walked the beat. Got arrested right down there, man. That's when they took my mask off and all that garbage. You got arrested? Yeah, they arrested me. They dropped all the charges, but it was kind of ridiculous. What were the charges? Uh, four, four counts of assault, three counts of vigilanteism, which was funny because vigilanteism is not a crime. So, I mean, that's not even in the statute of, of crimes for the state. Yeah. Uh, Superman! So, you know. We saw an increase of like petty crime, prostitution, drugs, and such like that, which really worried me. And after just even stepping out of my own place, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't stand to see this happen. So reading, you know, comic books as a young man, I decided to put on this persona. It wouldn't be long before we got to see the Rain City superheroes spring into action. This is the parking lot where someone's been breaking in, okay? I want you two to go up to the right and down. We're gonna go up here to the left. If you see anyone in there breaking into cars, if you chase them, they'll run into us. If I chase them, they'll run into you. Hey, your bag's open, buddy. Hey, your bag's open, brother. Close it for me? Yeah, sure. Super man. <laughs> yeah, it almost closed. Try this side. Ah, there you go, brother. Thank you very much. Be safe, my man. All right, they're turning. Let's go. As far as my relationship with him, I had read an article where someone had thrown on some tights or whatever and was uh, going out and fighting crime in the streets. I was like, oh, wow, this sounds really cool. This is something I've been going over in my mind, like a kick-ass scenario. And this guy's actually doing it. That's, that's pretty awesome. A guy just walked up the stairs. So we're just trying to see if he's getting a car or not. Originally, I did this without really a suit, just more of just the gear. But walking around in bulletproof gear is foolish. You just get stopped by the police and it doesn't really work. So I took something in iconography that people knew and stood for something good, and I made it my own. I think if people were enamored by scuba divers, or it could have been one of them as well. How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing good. I actually, I have your sleeping bag in the car, my man. So you're gonna be here tonight, right? All right, when I get off patrol, I'll come give it to you, brother. Good to see you, man. I thought you were someone bad for a second. That's just Rivers. It's all good. Yeah. Last time we were up here, he gave me a really cool tip that helped me solve a crime. So uh, I said I'd give him a sleeping bag. I got it in the car. So now that I see him, when they're done with patrol, I'll walk up and give him my sleeping bag. About 1.45, they let the bars out here. Yeah. And so from about 1.45 to 2.30, there's just giant crowds of people congregated out front, inebriated. If they didn't go home with a woman, maybe they're angry. Yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. It's always kind of cartoony and interesting. Ah, uh, so we're just uh, in a bit of a holding pattern. This is our uh, bell town, is where we are now. So all the people are coming out of the clubs. It's like a powder keg waiting to go off. So we're just uh, standing by. Hey, back up, guys, back up, back up. That wasn't me, Cap. That was the police. I didn't spray. You okay? Yeah, got some pepper spray? Yeah, I got a little bit. Uh, somehow, I got friendly fire. I've got pepper spray in the air. It's in my eye. The guy tried to snatch my roses out of my hand because he was mad that I had two, because no girls had roses, and I had two roses, and he was mad. So he tried to like snatch them away from me and then walk off. And I was like, you don't know me to snatch roses out of my hand, dude. And then he punches me in the face. That's so crazy. And then, of course, I'm gonna hit him back, right? Oh yeah. He punched me in the face. A couple people hit him back, actually. <laughs> he got, he got. You'll see the video in a second, but he gets beat up pretty bad. Are you gonna show then it to me? Then we mace him. Yeah, I'll show it to you. I can't give it to you. I can show it to you. It doesn't matter because no one presses charges, right? But a guy did hit a girl over here and then got stopped on a bunch. We got the whole thing on video. All the excitement seemed to give Parv an appetite for a seedy street dog, and good move to load up on whatever's in them, for the night was still young. Real shot. Hard as you can. No, man, come on. Real. Nothing. We had joined forces with the Rain City superhero movement in Seattle, a motley crew of citizens that had banded together to clean up their beloved town. It had been an eventful night on patrol, but things were about to take on a more somber tone. Okay, guys, we got shots fired, so this we got a problem here. That's fine. 
Yo, this is Jones. I'm going to need all the details possible on shots fired. Let's keep going, guys. Uh, we might hang back off these dudes because shots have been fired. And that's not really my domain. I'm not going to respond to shots fired. What we're going to respond to is the suspects on the run right now. Yep. So I'm just going to go chase them down. We've chased down lots of gunmen. Oh, just because they have a gun doesn't mean that they get away with crimes. I mean, yeah, it doesn't yeah. change anything. doesn't change anything. Did they shoot at you? I've been... Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, we've, we have a, we've been shot at, I think... New Year's was a very bad night. Yeah, New Year's we got shot at over 20 times. Are uh, you guys out here for tonight? Oh, yeah, definitely. It seemed the Seattle police had tonight's shooting under control. However, it led the guys to talk about another night that had shook them to their core. A woman got shot in the head and murdered down here where we're about to go, and I chased the gunman for a couple blocks before the police made a stop. I guess we all chased the gunman, actually. That was the uh, worst night. That's the dude, right? She's laying down back there, and that's us. Because, uh... Gunshots! 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 Hey, hey, we got gunshots! We got gunshots! I need a 911 call right now. We got gunshots. Keep shooting. Follow me. We went after the shooter, and the police told us to stop, so we stopped. It was really frustrating because they never caught the guy and she died and I had, to go I had to go meet her family and explain to them that I could have caught him and I didn't. There he is, there's the shooter, backpack running. Backpack running? Backpack running. Backpack running. Backpack running. If this is the bad guy, I got within this distance of the guy. And I could have taken him out, I could have tackled him. And you know, the reason I became a superhero and not a police officer is to make my own decisions, to make my own choices. And I had a chance to make my own choice. And as I'm doing it, someone told me to stop, and I listened. And then he got away. In the streets, come on. He's got a backpack, he's this way. That was just really intense. And I never would have, again, you know, living in this city for 15 years, I never would have thought that there would be, you know, gun battles in downtown Seattle. And uh, it was just really, you know, traumatic. It was really a, do I want to still keep doing this? Because, you know, like, I wasn't able to help her. You got a backpack. Looking for a great backpack. Was it hard after that happened to sort of come back out of control? It really didn't matter whether it was hard or not, because it's not about how I feel. It's about the commitment I've made to try to make the difference. So on a personal level, yeah, I didn't want to. It was terrible and I was not doing okay for a little bit after that, but I still made it out because, you know, maybe it could stop it from happening again. After about a week, I sat down and had to be, uh, you know, okay, if I don't keep doing this, it's gonna happen to more people. And next time, some, I might be able to help somebody. We need a medic immediately. We gotta give a description of this guy because we got it on camera. It gives me more vigilance in the sense that you know, I can't stop what I'm doing. You know, neither can you know, Phoenix Jones and Midnight Jack and tons of the other members of our team. Being a superhero is about me choosing what's right, about my own code. You know, about living by my own code. And that's sometime I didn't live by my code and the guy got away. And if I had done it my way, I would have got him. Nicole Westbrook's murder had clearly taken its toll but also strengthened these individuals' resolve to keep trying to protect the innocent the only way they knew how. There were also lighter moments the crew would share with us, including the blossoming of love. Before my first date with my wife, actually, I had gotten stabbed the night before. And uh, I didn't want to miss the date, so I glued it shut and came to the date, which was funny, because I ended up gluing myself inside my own super suit. We're having dinner, we're having a great time. I start laughing and I start leaking blood onto the tablecloth and into the suit because the, the stitches ripped open. And I'm thinking, well, this is a great way to ruin a date. But she was really cool. Went out in the back alley and I, I took my shirt off. Chixie helped me glue it back shut and we finished the date. And that's when I was kind of like, yeah, this is going to work. Seattle superheroes. Wait, okay, we need to be a little more intimate. One time there was this fight in Pioneer Square and it was just me alone. So I ran up and I just acted insane. I started screaming at the wall, like just doing a bunch of things that made me look absolutely crazy. And it just dispersed the crowd because no one wanted to deal with me. When I lived in uh, Italy because of my father's work during the Cold War, fighting the communists, I had a particular liking for Daredevil. I always thought he was pretty cool in the sense that he used uh, psychic powers and such like that in order to uh, suss things out and protect civilians. You know, a lot of people do not like Ben Affleck as Daredevil. I actually was okay with it, to be honest with you. 
he, like he looks like the character. The movie was not the greatest, but he does look like the character. And that's really all you can ask out of an actor. They're fucking dead sexy. And they're fighting crime in Seattle. Phoenix Jones out here in the town, Phoenix. keeping the streets safe, you know what I'm saying? Phoenix Jones. Yeah, Phoenix Jones. You guys be safe. At a quick glance, the whole scenario can seem quite ridiculous and legally precarious. But at the end of the day, the Rain City superheroes were at least standing up for what they believed in. And that alone is admirable. I like to do this as kind of like an extracurricular activity where instead of going to the gym, I run around a city that I love, say hi to people, take pictures, and then a lot of times work criminal. We continue to follow and watch because he was just out looking for a fight. I run a nonprofit to help victims of domestic violence, and my theme is encouraging uh, everyday heroes to stand up. So I have a lot of people that have written me and have called me and asked how they can help without putting on a costume, and I see a lot of people being inspired and uh, helping out. I really had a lack of male role models in my life when I was a kid, so comic books were the answer to that is what it was. It's like, look, here's a guy that you can look up to and he's not gonna he's not gonna screw you over. He he's always gonna be there. And it was just it was just easy to relate to that. It's a it's a way to help people in the city. I'm just a guy like you. I just wear a mask. No one's gonna talk about what I did if I'm just beating people up and hiding in a bush. No one's gonna get it. Ten years from now when I'm gone it's over. And I decided I'm going to inspire everyone to step up to crime when they see it. And that's gonna be my legacy. When we first heard about Seattle's superheroes, we didn't really know what to expect. Were they really making a difference, or were they just a bunch of deluded attention seekers? We formed the conclusion that they were concerned citizens who, while weird, at least had the guts to try to make their home a safer place. It would take a lot of balls for any of us to don a pair of tights and prowl the streets of Sydney dressed as a superhero when it wasn't Mardi Gras. And just before we left, Phoenix Jones finally revealed his superpower. We're in the U.S., it's a freestyle, yo. When I rep with my man Gonzo, God needs to help us, and in God we trust, but you gotta bless us. That's the truth, kid. You wanna know how I roll with I got a wife with a bulletproof vest on, so you know it's like she rocking Teflon. It's the true son, and when you go to mess on, don't mess with the best, because you can't well, test I'm the rest. dude, and you know you can sell for 684 plus your tax. You can back it up, and I can, because I'm the dude, and you know you gotta trust. What's up? Alright, uh, I'm going to say obviously I can't compete with that so I might just give him a little compliment. Uh, Phoenix Jones has got some serious flow, yes. that's why he's Rain City's number one superhero. Yes. But anyway, this is the end of the show and it's time to go. Basically, I just want to let you see something. Uh, we're in Austin, I had a run in with Poison Ivy and it's fucking me up. Um, there. Here's the real kicker. Look out, ladies. <laughs> We left poor Gonzo in the hotel room after his unfortunate run-in with Poison Ivy. And so with a man down, we continued to the city of San Marcos and we were getting pretty amped. I reckon whatever your views are about what you're about to see, it's definitely going to be super interesting. I'm really, really excited. First developed in 1996, the Real Doll's popularity and quality had steadily soared. A Real Doll is a life-size, anatomically correct, uh, fully posable silicone uh, woman, and we make men too. And check this out. Matt had even made a doll of himself. That's taking the self-portrait to the next level. Could you tell us how this whole scene actually evolved for you? Like, where did it start and where is it at now? It all started about uh, 15 or 16 years ago. Originally, it was sort of a concept I had for a very high-end, realistic, posable mannequin. So I had designed it originally with that in mind and uh, started to get people contacting me. And uh, first it was one, then it was two or three, four or five different people saying they were really interested in what I was doing, but they wanted to know if this could be used as a sex toy. So, you know, I kind of scratched my head for a minute and thought, well, this could be, be kind of a direction, so I went with it. The task at that point was just to put the orifices in and make the breast feel softer than the rest of the body, uh, so on and so forth, to really just give it that functionality. Matt then took us on a tour of the factory floor. It was a little disturbing, but definitely fascinating. One of the, the first things we need to make these dolls is the molds. These are 
the body molds that we use to actually cast the body. So you can see we have uh, quite a few of them. As I was going through all the different bodies that we have, each body has its own mold, and in some cases more than one if it's a popular body. So we need to be able to pour two at once or even three at once. This is uh, some bodies that have just sort of uh, been demolded. We have a big track here that we rotate the bodies around as they go from the point of being taken out of the mold to being almost finished and ready to ship. And then they go in this final row right here, which is where they get detailed, you know, airbrushing, um, fingernail detail, the toenails, uh, nipple color, airbrushing on the body, a lot of little stuff. I was blown away at the level of detail that went into the dolls. They usually get dressed in a little outfit, you know, like a little mini dress, some shoes, a little bit of jewelry. Whilst we were becoming more comfortable in this once foreign world, it still felt a bit like the set of some strange science fiction movie. This is the, uh, the room where we do all the, the finishing of the faces. Um, you know, they kind of start out raw like this, um, the casting, and then uh, much like the bodies, they get trimmed, patched, cleaned up, uh, and then we hand apply the makeup until they look more like that. Do you find you have to deal with a lot of negative stigma or, or anything like that from people? Um, in the early days when we started, we did, we, you know, get the occasional letter from a feminist organization telling us that we're objectifying women and da 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 da, -da. And not so much anymore. And really when, when people would contact us with that sort of approach, I would just tell them, you know, in my mind anyway, the way I see it is that imitation is a sincerest form of flattery and all I'm doing is imitating the beauty that I see in women every day. Uh, believe it or not, some of these guys are, uh, their lives have been changed in, in a very positive way by having a doll. You know, I get letters all the time saying how, how lonely they were and, and that the doll is so much more than a sex object or a toy. It's, it's a presence in their home and they feel excited to go home. After chatting to Matt, we cruised around for one last look at the factory floor. And that's when I saw her. A vision of beauty the likes of which I had never seen, and I knew that my life would never be the same. I think for an artist to, to know that my art has that effect on people is uh, very rewarding for me. And with that, it was time to hit the road. We drove into the sunset, and I let Nick take the wheel. As I drifted off in sweet remembrance of the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. This happens overnight But you were so mistaken Writing verses, working overtime I'm just being patient Lights some incense up on this musical high Got me feeling like Russell Crowe from a beautiful mind We saw an increase of like petty crime, <laughs> prostitution, drugs and such like that 